welcome, welcome, welcome to Planning Face Syndicate, episode 124. Tonight, we're going to be talking the Canadian World Qualifier. We're going to talk to some store champs. There's some cool stuff out there we found, as well as we're going to be talking a little bit about the extended meta. So tonight's going to be a little bit special. We have a special guest, Raythos from Off Meta Podcast, will be joining us here in just a few minutes. Um, I will apologize if my voice sounds weird tonight or if I look a little zoned out. I've had like an allergic reaction for the last like week. So I'm um, very hyped up on antihistamines right now. Um, so if I look like I've fallen asleep, I apologize. I am not. Um, but just as an FYI, as we get the show going. Uh, to begin with, what I wanted to do is bring up the isophane initiative real quick. We have the Isophane Initiative, which is happening this year. If you don't remember what that was last year, Isophane offered to match the money. People can make some donations and get people that can't afford some of the expensive plane tickets and hotel rooms uh, from overseas to Adepticon 2024. So essentially what they're going to do is you could team up with them to get people to Adepticon. They have a fixed budget, and that's why he's fundraising, because he's not made of money. Um, to talk about who's eligible, if you have players that have valid world invites um, or are not positive contributors to their local X-Wing community, those are the people he's going to be looking at financially assisting. Um, <clears throat> last year, I can't remember exactly how much. When I bring the guys in, they can tell me exactly how much was raised last year, but there was quite a bit of money that was raised to help bring some of the people from overseas um, across for it. They are also going to be sponsored in part by Putini Parts. Um, if you have never bought anything from that gentleman, he is amazing. I have the best Beskar tokens that I got from a kit we bought from him that are literally my favorite token ever until somebody makes me a Thrawn token. Then that will be uh, my favorite. Uh, Fun Rock and Cattle Breeze also be sponsoring it. I'll have a link in the description. There's going to be a way that you're able to look at the application form. So if you would like to apply, there's going to be a passenger manifest. And there's, I don't know why he called it that, but that's what you can go look at to specifically get to how to sign up for this. Now, with that being said, let's bring in our host and guest tonight. Please welcome to the show, JJ, if you aren't a Lions fan, after today, you 100% should be. I think I'm going to have to be a Lions fan for the rest of the season because, my goodness, the Giants just look very, very gross. I think that by putting on this hat, I've actually cursed the Giants into being the mirror of the Lions, right? Because they actually have the same win-loss record in reverse. Um, so I think when I put on the hat, I, I made that happen. So, gosh, it's terrible. Well, you also <laughs> owe me for a bet. We got to go back to the episodes and find the bet where I was correct that um, a certain somebody has force abilities and you were 100% <laughs> incorrect. So we will not uh, go into it because of spoilers if you case you haven't seen the Ahsoka show. Um, but you do owe me for that bet too. So Yes, I do. Also joining us is the bench warmer himself. Alex, how are you tonight, sir? Oh, I'm doing okay. Had a Friendsgiving today. Nice. And JJ, do you know what's even more tragic? The Giants have what? eight losses. The Lions have seven wins. We've lost more than we want to. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, bench warmer is a misnomer because my goodness, you you got the same day notice that Chris couldn't play in the Nickel City League, and you're like, oh, first order, sure, I'm gonna play it like I've been playing it as my main faction like all this time, and went in and just rocked it this this week for uh, the Nickel City League. So. Thank you, man, for covering for Chris, man. Yeah, I got to play a faction that's not garbage. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're in resistance now. How, I know. how can you say I resistance, resistance is, is great? Okay. Um, now the guest of the hour, Rathos. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing okay. How are you guys? Good. We yeah. don't have a video, which is okay. We just have the beautiful melodic voice from the Off Meta podcast. Hopefully you've had a good weekend, and uh, I don't know. Did you get to play in any X-Wing this weekend? 
No, I mean, I was watching what was happening in Vancouver, but um, uh, for actually playing X Wing, I haven't done a lot of it. Uh, but you know, I've been I've been tinkering, and obviously, I have a podcast where I talk about X Wing a lot, so um, it's 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 on my mind a little bit. <laughs> so why don't we kick off the show? Because a lot of people know you from the Yasby, right? You know, you have been integral in the community um so i've been around two years or three years and you've been a staple name since i joined so why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and about your podcast that you just started here in the last couple months sure so i took over so yasby is not um i although a lot of people know me because of that yasby is not a thing that i created it was a thing that existed um back in 1.0 and someone else um, was the regenerator of that. But what happened is that he quit when 2.0 launched and uh, nobody else was making it. So I just kind of uh, stepped in because I needed it for myself. And then I needed help from other people to like get the database up and running in like a day. So uh, they wanted it too. And then I was like, wow, I guess, I guess I'll, I guess I'll just release it for everybody. And then I've kind of been running it ever since. Which is crazy because I guess I never heard that story. I never knew that. That's yeah. that's, that's interesting. Thank God you didn't dump it when two point five came out. Uh, there's no there, like there was no reason for like the thing is is that um, I'm probably so there are some people who get who get who get fatigued out of X Wing after a long period of time uh, for various reasons, too many ships, not enough time, whatever. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of X Wing. Um, per se, like, I mean, never say never, but the thing that makes X-Wing kind of fun for me is more about the, the mechanics of playing. And I'm the kind of person who's like a meta is just a meta. It doesn't really matter. Like I can have fun in any meta, even like the worst ones, because I'm always trying to think like, what is, what is the, what is the puzzle to solve to get around this specific problem? whatever it is and of course more metas are fun to play than others but that doesn't change the inherent core element of let me try to problem solve this with a specific thing that i want to do and let me try to solve that and let me figure out uh, if and if it's not something that i can solve with less building let me just solve it by tactics right so um that's basically why like i've essentially flown poe in competitive play since i started playing the game uh, uh, specifically PBA Poe, and it's basically been in almost every single competitive list that I've done um, for the entire time I've been playing X-Wing. Not that I don't like flying other stuff. Uh, it's just the fun, it's just a really fun problem to solve every single meta is like, how do I make Poe viable in this environment? Yeah, and I think I think that's, that's really good because I chose CIS and not now I feel a little bit sillier about it compared to uh, Poe, we don't have as cool a pilot as that outside of maybe Dirge and Grievous. Um, so there is that. So let's talk about your podcast a little bit. You you recently started one up. Um, I have seen and listened to a few of your your episodes, and they are they they exceed ours. Like I thought, two hours was um, us going two hours was, was a lot. Um, some of your episodes have bridged three hours. Um, yeah, so that's I'll... just Chris, though. That's not that's that doesn't count. I actually, yeah, it's Chris Allen. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I try generally when I get guests on, right? I just generally try to tell them like I aim for the two hour mark, and it's not any specific thing. I honestly, uh, I could go for every episode being three plus hours if I really wanted to, but I feel like the guests get fatigued after the two hour mark, and I don't want to push hard. Like the whole thing about my. Uh, podcast format is it's just a natural like conversation it's not like uh i'm not trying to do anything right like it's this is probably the least professional podcast um that you can find um and it's not really about yeah you know, i'm not trying to be a big thing or anything i'm just trying to have an excuse to talk to people that i'm interested in right um uh so it ends up being like, okay, two hours is about around the time that people generally are starting to like fade a little bit. And it's like, okay, well, let's not push things too hard so we can cut it there. Um, 
I, it just happens to be a good timing because I think most people really like listening to, you know, if you're if you're driving half an hour a day or like 20 minutes a day or whatever, that just basically gets you through the week listening to the podcast if you're just commuting. So it's kind of can kind of convenient on the timing, but it's not anything specifically that I engineered. Got it. Well, I will admire you from a distance at the three hour mark. I think we did that once when we had the points change. We did one time yeah. we did like a three hour podcast when the points change, because like for me, that's the most interesting is when we get a new points drop, that means the meta is changing all of a sudden. And there's so much out there to build list wise that you you don't even know. Um, and, and I would say I kind of in an agreement with AMG and the aspect I don't think the meta is solved. Um, and for example, we had a small store champ that we didn't get enough people to give out invites to on Saturday, but we had enough people and there was some unique lists. So for example, somebody brought Bo-Katan in the gauntlet and JJ has been testing that around. And I will say that that is an underrated piece in Republic right now and held up pretty well against meta staples. So I don't know. I guess Rathios for for you with Rathios for the the, <laughs> meta, the meta piece, because um, you do call yourself the off meta podcast. Do you do you go out of your way to talk about stuff that doesn't exist in the meta? Like, do you, does each episode have a different gimmick to it, or are you looking more just to talk to people about what they like to talk about? Oh, off meta is a is meta commentary about the podcast format in X Wing. It's not actually. We're not actually talking about the meta, which is really funny because, um, you know, you would you would think that it has something to do with that, but in fact, I'm just uh, making a making a fun a fun little uh, thing. I mean, when 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 I'm talking to guests, we're just mostly just talking about X wing in general terms, right? So if they want to talk about the meta, I'm down to talk about the meta. If they want to talk about random stuff, I have lots of ideas. In fact, I just had an idea that popped in three days ago that I've been. Per per percolating and testing with that is very much not a meta pick and uh, uh, not ready to it's not fully cooked yet so I'm gonna let it cook for a bit more before it ends up in any sort of public kind of a conversation but you know the recent episode that just came out was with crispy and all we did was list build for two hours and that was all that was just not fun. non meta <laughs> yeah. non meta stuff right and so you know it's it's not it, building because I think <laughs> I like list building, it, it, even in, in 2.5. I know some people don't, but I like list building just in general. And uh, if you're only trying to pick meta lists, you aren't really list building, right? And so, yeah. you know, the list building is kind of, and for me, it's like, it's like, how do you pick or how do you create lists in spite of what is being played or understanding what is being played, right? So you need to under, a deep understanding of the meta in order to list build off meta, but I mean, I don't even think of it as on meta because as, as soon as something like that you create becomes really good, it becomes meta, right? And then, and and so like, you know, the, the idea of something that's off meta and then permanently in off meta, they would have to have some sort of like really severe handicap um, that would require it to not be played generally, right? Across everywhere. Like for an example, um, I think the uh, Seer Swarm uh, back in 2.0, uh, or like early 2.0, when CIS first came out, that was an extremely strong list that was dominating in any terminal that it showed up in. But you would only ever have one person flying it because no one would, in, in their right mind, is going to buy eight vultures. So it just didn't happen, right? And that so that's like a severe limitation. It has nothing to do with the list itself or like how to fly it. But it's just like people aren't. Not people aren't just dedicated enough to buy eight vultures for CIS specifically in the, the most the least most popular faction in the game, right? Um, that's just statistics. I, that's not that's not a play. That's not a, like a, a a comment on whether or not CIS is good or not. It just it's objectively the least played faction in the game. So your least played faction in the game, eight vulture droids. You ain't seen very much of that list, right? Um, <laughs> it, it is it is what it is but like there are lists that are like that where some there's some sort of maybe external factor that prevents a list being fade those are permanently in off meta literally everything else if it becomes good enough it'll be a it'll become a meta list if it's if it's a strong list yeah and i kind of agree with you especially if the the way amg has transitioned the game is they're ensuring that people can buy the ships they want to buy right it's not as much about you know 
do you own this from 2.0? Do you own that from 2.0? Do you own this from 1.0? And let's customize it. it. They're making it available for everybody. So I, I think that personally, I think that's actually a positive factor that they've like worked to succeed at over the last year and a half, um, personally. Yeah, I mean, the the thing that I super like about this version of points is that it uh, really hones in the idea of swapping pieces out and trying different things because, you know, you might have a core concept and that concept might be, you know, 13 points or so of list. And then you have about seven points to kind of like counter meta with or like f fill up your fill up your 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 gaps or you know uh, add additional synergy but you have to make those calls right and you be able used to be able to do this in the previous points uh, uh, versions but it was a lot more difficult to really experiment because a lot of the times the list only functioned you know you go to 175 points and you've kind of like created your combo and then you have to just kind of maybe you get to change one or two upgrades it's not really a significant change in your list to to identify it. so you know yeah you still had you had maybe more flexibility more nuance uh but it didn't actually end up making your list building more diverse and so this allows you to take big swings and trying to figure out what you want to do yeah and I, I kind of like i like that analysis and it, because if you think about it it's one of the things you know like i'm not a big standard loadout guy card i guess right and, you know, like for a while, Grievous, everybody was like, well, you just run out maneuver. And and I won't lie and say in tournaments, it's easier to run that. But I played around with like Debris Gambit and some of these other upgrades and they have decent use cases. Right. And like Debris Gambit for Grievous is not the worst upgrade in the game. You get a native. All of a sudden you get a native um, evade token evade. With, yeah. that you never had before. Right. And so. <clears throat> that's like I came from Destiny, so for me, like list building, that that's what you did. That Destiny was about list building and then skill in how to play cards and then random card draw and dice dice variants, you know. Um, whereas X Wing is more about positioning, understanding how your opponent can react to what you're doing and how you can react to them. And now we have objectives, which I was a huge fan of when they introduced those. To me, that was like yeah. the best improvement we've ever we've ever seen yeah i yeah. agree and uh, okay. no God. you you had you first you first no i was gonna say yeah i definitely agree like adding that extra nuance uh definitely made you rethink about how you put a list together all together right because before you know you didn't you didn't have that piece right you're just basically going for deathmatch uh trying to see if you can outlast your opponent by building super like point fortressy lists or having uh lists that can delay engagement to the very end and just use time against your opponent um, but now with the add-on of, you know, the objective piece in 2.5, it just totally revamped, um, like, how you think about building a list, right? You want to have ships that can be objective grabbers, you know, those quick, uh, cheap disposable pieces. And then you want that core of your list that can uh, go in and do to whatever you wanted to do, whether it wants to go in and hunt people, where it wants to go in and control uh, or uh, be an objective based list. Um, and there's just so many combinations that you can go there. And for me, list building um, for me felt it became a lot more thematic um, when, when factoring all these objectives and um, just really thinking about the list and how it does um, in each type of objective or scenario um, just really helps like give that extra feels good about you know list building the, the exciting portion of x-wing sure i i think for me the interesting thing about objectives because tactically objectives is wildly different from uh from you know uh previous previous competitive play but from the list building perspective it actually does some weird thing where you don't like in previous versions you would you would you would cut a lot of list potential on the cutting room floor before you even put it together because it functionally doesn't work points are awkward doesn't really make it they don't have the upgrades that you need blah 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 there's a lot of reasons to cut things before you even get to the point where you've completed a whole list now because of objectives there's a lot of lists 
where you have soft controls of like whether or not this is good or bad, you can't really tell until you put it on the table. So a lot of more lists make it to that first cut where it's like, okay, this might be good. I have to check it against the other objectives because theoretically it's good in this objective, but it's weak in this objective. And then if I sub out these things, maybe I'll make it stronger here or there. And until you actually get some data on it, it's hard to know for sure whether or not something is strong or weak. A lot of the time they'll look at a list and be like, yeah, that might be good. I don't know. We got to put it on the board, right? So there's a lot. So, you know, there might be, you know, less good lists or there might be more good lists. But the fact is, is that when you're list building, a lot of the times you're just, you're able to creatively just create whatever you want. And because on paper, a lot of the times that list ends up looking like decent, like, oh, this, this might actually be good. Like, let's put it on the board. Let's see how it plays out. And then you'll find out whether or not it actually is good. And that's always a good thing to like not have to um, eliminate options before you have a chance to test them. Like quick draw. <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's how I always see quick draw. Like I had great success until um, until I started playing other people that knew what to do with quick draw, and then I never quick draw never lives. So. I mean, it does widely depend on how you fly them, too. But yeah, you're right. Quick draw does tend to pop very easily. You'll get the bonus <laughs> off attack once. Yeah, at least once, once yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> anything else? Yeah, I, I think one of the big things, you know, like we strive for on our show here is is we're not obviously super amazing players. We're decent players. And our goal is to help kind of build community and build up others to you know carry on the legacy i mean i guess i'm only 40 so uh, as long as x-wings allow for at least another 10 years right i could probably play it when i hit 50 i don't know if i'll have the uh energy to go to three-day tournaments anymore i don't know maybe i will um so i believe in you <laughs> what, one of the things that i kind of you know that i wanted to talk about a little bit tonight was store champs <clears throat> and i don't I don't want to get into the AMG piece about what we talked about before. I don't care about that anymore. We're past that. We, we have an official ruling. What I want to talk about is how to build store champs for others, right? So this weekend, and I'll use our store as an example, we had a couple of locals come out and then we had some people that came up from Indiana. Um, and then we also had some new people that I've, I've just never played with. And I think one of the big things is making sure everybody feels comfortable um, and different things like that. So what I what I thought would be kind of a good discussion is let's let's talk about a little bit about store champs and building because even as we're coming to a close in the season in the next you know four months right or I guess is it two months because technically they stopped taking submissions in January. Yeah. So, um, but what I kind of want to talk about a little bit is just hey how does how do you how do you how can you build your local store stores up do you do we need to run these store champs at cheaper prices to bring more people in does that benefit does it benefit to um provide outside support how much effort should we be putting into this and how can we build a community so who wants to kick us off well i think that the one of the most important things too is um connecting with the store right like um sending that that relationship between you and the store itself, whether it be uh, the person who's in charge of running events or the store owner who does those events by themselves. Uh, typically, your typical friendly local game store is usually small. They don't have like a very deep pocket to like help run these events um, or the staff to do so. Um, so definitely that being that point of contact with them to um, like help drive announcements and provide that either by having the store put on the website um, or by providing um, like little tidbits of posts around um, like some of the posters that they'll have in the store for like X-Wing and stuff, just letting them know, hey, if you're interested in learning, come in these days um, or we have a tournament coming up, take a look at our calendar here that's visible in the store um, or encouraging them to create a Discord for that sh store um, or uh, get any any social media presence um, with the permission of the store so that way uh, people who are interested in learning about the game and attending those events um, have a point of reference online so that way when um 
when the date approaches for those stores, you have that available. Uh, you have the the store helping promote that event as much as possible. Um, so that way you have that extra bit of legwork that you can reach out to potential people who may want to come in and um, or are even visiting out of town in the area. And they're like, hey, maybe I can find a store that's doing uh, a tournament or having a game night and they can come in. And that's that's definitely a very key piece in, in growing it is having that visibility and partnering with the store Rachel, so what is your what is your thoughts do you play locally do you guys do you all have like a local play community in your area yeah yeah i mean toronto well i would say southern ontario really has a lot of different communities uh we've had a lot of store champs this season um a lot of store champs and then we had a then and then there was a the saint laurent open that was in montreal so there's been plenty of opportunities for people to play and i think coordination in the larger uh, the larger kind of like area is i think the the real the really the best way to ensure that you can build up a community uh i think i think for a long time now uh, even you know before AMG took over, but for a long time, we had the the strength of large tournaments or big big events, which, which you know, sixteen people is you know maybe small for some people, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a large number of people for a game that isn't Magic or Pokemon. So, you know, having have in order to hit those numbers on a regular basis, you you can't just kind of rely on one local community to do that. You really should be expecting to try to 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 gather in a larger group. You know, it's kind of been a thing with X Wing for a long time. Uh, even when the numbers were higher, you know, the larger tournaments would drive people from outside of you know maybe your local area. And I think that's a key critical element of really good competitive scene is that people want to travel to other events, and and it does two things for you know the kind of the the community first of all the individual events are going to be more varied because you have more communities interacting with each other uh, so which means different metas if you if you only had your own local meta you're going to have a warped view of what the game is really like and it's not until you see other groups out there and what they're doing can you really kind of have an established view of like what the game is really like there's like a and this happened a lot at one point you would see people who are like saying oh this upgrade is extremely good or extremely bad, but they only played in their local group of eight or you know ten people, and then so they would get a very skewed view of like what the what that meta is like because maybe you know most people were playing Empire and no one was playing Scum, for example, or something like that, right? Um, and so that's the first thing that's really important is that like you know it it makes that meta like more fun and makes everyone's you know uh, game more fun. I think we have having the variety, and then the second thing is that having a, a a network of, of communities to work with means that when the when there are times when communities dips or whatever, you can still have a kind of consistent uh, turnout. And consistency is the, the path to success for any community long term. So you really want to have everybody, you know, you, you should you should think that like, oh, if I go to a tournament that I don't have to worry about if there are going to be enough people to play in the tournament. Right. Like you don't want to show up and there's only like three people. Right. That's you. You So, you know, if you have a larger network of, of people and people are regularly coming out, you have people who are always coming out. Even if you have only eight people playing in a tournament, it's not enough for store champ. You can at least still have a tournament. Right. You don't want to waste people's time for just showing up for just something and then nothing happening. Right. And that's that's more more likely to be a regular thing when you have a larger network to draw upon. Yeah, and that's what we did Saturday. We gave out the cards, right? And, um, for example, the person that came in first had already won all the cards. So the set person that came in second, she had not won any of the cards. So it worked out really well because he just handed them down to her. So he's like, I already got one of these Hans. Here you go. Um, so we, we gave out some money as well as we also gave out cards. And then some of the newer players who, when they came out to some of the larger ones, had um, hit, hit towards the bottom and weren't getting all of the sword champ cards we basically were able to give out all the top four cards and everybody that was there yesterday got those cards that um 
had not already had them. So that was really neat. We outside of the Han card, right? The Han card is the only one. You only get one of those. Um, so, um, so something that one of my my older communities did in in Orlando back when I was there is that we would um, commission a painted ship, right, for um, for any particular faction, and give that out as a prize, right, to to um, to players who were like newer and stuff like that and like did well in addition to you know whatever the, the top prize would be um do you think that in local communities that have like a very strong meta for like one, one particular faction in order to entice them to try out other factions that maybe giving away ships for the other factions that aren't seen as well might be a good way to try to drive them to try out other factions and maybe grow the community a little bit more that way do you think that's a viable way Are you asking me or are you asking either or <laughs> uh, in my I guess I'll be real short and so because I talked a lot. So in my opinion, yes, I do think that that would be a positive distribution, um, though. I will tell you that we gave out money yesterday and Zach specifically made it his goal to try to get in top because guess what we had at our store? <laughs> a loop and chewy like <laughs> for 15 bucks. Nice. <laughs> um, so his goal was is to win the money. <laughs> To get that but um anyway i do think yes it could help drive it i would also like to see other prize support from amg i just don't know if we're gonna get that and that's kind of where for me that question came in is do we think that we could get like if it let's say there was a semi-national couple of organizations that did tokens and different kit tokens that you could order for your small kits is that something that we'd we'd as a community want to support to help grow the game and and grow tournaments so I'll throw I, a caveat I, in here. Nice. Um, I think one of the things, you know, kind of looking things from a historical perspective, is that when FFG was running tournaments at the peak of 1.0, right, when the X-Wing was at its, its highest, it didn't actually have a lot of prizes. Um, what it did have was scarcity and upgrades. So when you did have a promo that, you know, was available, that everyone wanted to get it. And it was just usually just one promo. So I remember the, as an example, the thing that got me to come out to play in competitive, the, 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 the bait, so to speak, was uh, the first tournament that I played in, you could, if you made top 16 in a store champ, you got a 3PO, a C3PO yeah. upgrade card, right? Now, so the difference here is that in 1.0, you can only get that sucker by buying, uh, I believe, the Tantive Four. Yeah, the uh, huge ship. The huge, the yeah, yeah. the huge ship. Yep. So right. that so that was a hundred dollar upgrade, right? And so the idea of like, well, if I go to this door champ and I just make top sixteen, then you know, and when there was only twenty four people, that's tournament, right? So you just, I just need to, I just need to be in top half, and I can get this upgrade and save myself a hundred dollars. I'm very justified in playing this tournament and getting to the competitive scenes. It's a very easy hook, right? And they're also and also scarcity and upgrades makes those upgrades or you know promos or whatever prizes make those things more valuable, right? If you flood the turn, if you flood the scene, and we saw this um, late FFG, uh, the hyperspace trials with the black um, dice, right? Dice used to be extremely rare and hard to get. And then some, and then the hyperspace trials happen with those dice, and you couldn't give them away. There were so many, yeah. right? And so, and to the point where it's like people would give those dice to new players because they're like, for the new players, like, ooh, shiny, and for them, they're like, this is garbage. Here, please have some. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's, there, there's, um, so FFG had the thing where they would create upgrades and paywall them, and paywall them very heavily, you know, and then, and then th that would make for great prizes. And you know that works. That works as a model for getting people to come to the to game. It, it's like a financial reason why you would want to do that, right? As well as you know, now that you you know, in terms of access, allows you to get more access to to things that might be you know stuck behind specific ships. FFG in 2.0 went away from that model, and it severely hurt them from a financial perspective. It feels like, right? And we 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 don't know if AMG is going to go back to that kind of model. They've kind of like hinted at it with what happened with the uh, starter sets and the um, uh, and the 
the 2400 with with standardized cards but you know if they did but then they created new promos that like you know that you could get access to without having to buy the the pack you know that might be a a, a thing but the cap uh, going back to the caveat sorry to get off track here but the caveat is if they make too many upgrades or too many promos and like templates, you know, if there's just too much stuff available at the choice, it devalues the the point of having um, something that's official, right? Because I think the the real exciting, the reason why um, official promos have value is not because of the thing itself, because you can see in the community uh, with what Louis is doing and what others are doing, the promos that we're creating as a community are generally of a higher quality and build quality and, and creative quality than what FFG or AMG would be able to create. But what, what those guys are able to create with their official product is a legitimacy of me being able to play those in official tournaments without having to worry about whether or not it's going to be accepted. So at, at an event like Worlds, right, where it's like you can only play with stuff that's official, right? There's no question about it. Right. And there's also no question about, you know, if I won these in a tournament, you know, it's the the, the claim, the late the, the later claim is that, like, you know, you can only get these if you want to like a system open or, or you know, whatever. And so that adds, you know, just a little bit of more legitimacy, just like, oh, I'm a good player because I, I was able to win these or whatever. Right. It, it's a part of the swag. Right. And so that that's a that's a quality, not quantity thing. Right. So to me, like a really great prize is not it's not so much it's kind of like what they did with the um with the with the Poe Falcon for this store champ, right? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the rest of the upgrades there that's that's cute and whatever, but you had to win one of these those those suckers to get that Poe and it's a foil Poe. The po, the Poe itself is not very valuable or exciting. But if you were if you were uh if you won those, if you put that on the table, you know that you know you have to win a store champ to get one of those. Or you know, get it off the secondhand market, right? The the problem is, store champ itself is not very. Uh, it's a it's the same thing with the the dice, right? From the hypertrophy trials, there's a lot of them, so there's going to be a lot of pose, right? So so we're, I think what we're going to see is like those uh, templates from the opens, the the Jedi, the lightsaber ones. Those are going to see a lot of like rarity. People are going to be they're going those are going to be really sought after, right? Um, and so. <laughs> To get to kind of like get a conclusion out of this rambling, effectively, I would love to see if they if they created an uh, something as for the generic people who the, this like kind of like you know generic upgrade that you know you get for winning something that were something that was like you know uh, you're gonna you're gonna flood the market with to be something that uh, you can't get very easily normally. So, for example, uh, Altart Dash for Scum or. Uh, or alt art uh, Vader starter kit, something that like you know I don't want to spend seventy five dollars on starter kit for Vader, but I could get that this yeah. this alt art one, right? Something like that where it's like an established oh this would be valuable, uh, so that it justifies me coming to play, right? Uh, even if uh, and if and if not, at least well you know someone else is going to want this, so secondary market it would have value, right? That would be the ideal for me. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what they did at Worlds, right? You know, like the 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 alt our promos aren't the most amazing things in the world, um, but they were cool because they were standard loadout ones and people were using them. So, like, I had somebody offer me a hundred dollars for my Vader one, you know, and I was like, um, "Well, I'm gonna keep it because I'm weird like that. I probably should just sell it, but I'm gonna keep it because you know, like, I got that, and you know, I got that for winning, you know." around and being able to get into world so i don't know alex you've been real quiet do you have any thoughts store kit store chance stuff um before we wrap up move on i was just letting right those do his thing he's great um <laughs> <laughs> no i mean it, it makes sense uh like maybe something no i mean yeah i agree with like the standard vader or like the standard loadout dash uh, maybe even something like the titles, um, like the Moldy Crow, where it's multifactional. So that would be if someone didn't pick up like a Scum Conversion Kit or something, you could actually do that or anything. Hey, I'd be down to see custom like Seeker Missiles, which is currently only standard uh, on the on the the White Seas, right? 
I mean, yeah, but they got to release those first. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like that, that would be like the only way to get that is like to to get it right. Because the only way to run that upgrade at all is by flying the YT2400. But if you wanted to make it a custom upgrade and you could only win it by participating in the in the tournaments, I think that would be a good draw. I don't know about that. That's you, you're. you're <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we want people chasing all those cards. I guess it depends on how widely available it was. Like the last thing you need, JJ, is for somebody to be able to put those on the table, and you can't. Like there's a to some extent there's a reason they're doing what they're doing with standard loadout and how they are making everything black box specifically versus the other stuff. So I, I don't know if I'm sold on your your idea there. That that seems. That seems a little hard to swallow for me, personally. Understandable. All right. Anyone have anything else about Store Champs uh, th that they want to talk about before we move on? We could probably spend the whole show talking about it, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it would be beneficial or not. Does anyone have anything else? If not, we can move into our pattern analyzer segment. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. The first store champ that we wanted to talk about tonight was at Black Knight Game Store um, in Canada, right? Um, which is hilarious because there was already a Canadian... I don't know where Black Knight Game Store is in Canada. It must be the east side or something. Um, Rathos, do you, do you know where this is by chance? Is you, you, talk like, uh, you, talk, you talk about Canada as if it's like the size of New York City. <laughs> which is funny because you were also like the Canadian <laughs> open, but like Vancouver is like Seattle to New York. Like it's far. Right. Um, and St. Laurent is like, is, is in Montreal, which is again, far away. Right. So, so, but, but the worst part about this is that in this case, this specific case, Black Knight games is actually like an hour and a half from so it's actually it's actually close to where i am so like in this specific case you're that's the right nomenclature but for the wrong reasons <laughs> i get that a lot it's a, it's a thing of mine well you know they they made us you know memorize geography except for canada in school over here so yeah <laughs> I learned the Canadian prophecies. so i so little history so i used to have um two other podcasts that i used to do before this one and one of my co-hosts was from Alberta. So um, it was always a, they would, there would always be unrunning jokes about different Canadian things. Cause I don't, I've been to Canada, like, I don't know, a handful of times. Like I've been in Toronto, I've been to Windsor. Um, that's really it. Those are the only two places. It was right really. there. It's like half an hour away. Well, for you, it is not for me. I don't live in Detroit. So um, but anyway, so it was always an unrunning joke on my old podcast because I would say something dumb like that, and he would always be like, well, let me give you the Canadian education, and then we'd spend like 20 minutes talking about it. So, Either way, this store champ in Canada, um, had they, we had one 4-0. Cam Murphy went 4-0 with a list we've seen a million times over before. Um, and so typically what we do is we kind of read through the lists. Um, I try to collect three and one lists, or if it's a bigger event, three and two lists that like are a little bit different than what we're seeing or had different upgrades. And this tournament minus Cam Murray's had quite a few that we had not seen specifically before. So JJ, what did Cam bring? Uh, so we see a, uh, a rubble list here, uh, something that we've seen uh, Similar archetype for the most part. So we got uh, Han Solo with Trick Shop, Receptive Copilot, and Bistan, uh, the Battle of the Abin Luke, uh, the whole Oakland, which is the Battle of the Abin version, uh, with Dorsal Sword, Advanced Proton Torpedoes, and Precise Astromech. And if I remember correctly, he can reload, uh, right? If he has nobody in his arc at range two. So oh, there's no Adoe ships at range two of them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. 
Um, and then we got Kyo Venzi at the A wing with Lone Wolf concussion missiles and vectored cannons. And then Sabine ran with Beskar to round off the list. Uh, it's a very solid list. Uh, this has a lot of utility um, across the board. Um, can really swarm into a uh, an enemy and really punch really hard with uh, with Trick Shot Han and Luke. And then Hole, if he happens to be in that range one uh, bubble and shoots off that advanced proton torpedoes, can deliver that 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 killing blow that he needs to. Uh, congrats! It's a it's a good list. Very solid. So. Let's move on to the next list. So the um, the next list that I, I kind of pulled out was from Ryan, and it was a scum list. Alex, have you seen this list before? It looks very I familiar have... to yours with a little bit different <laughs> upgrades on their Afra. Yes, I have seen the individual pieces like this before. I don't recall seeing like lists that put them all together. But yes, this has Afra with uh, Rook and Han and Triple Zero. Take that uh, reinforced when you engage. Take that red focus. Take that strain for Rook. Print print three heads every time you shoot. Um, Lima with R4 and Plasma Torps. I, I can't get behind that. <laughs> but uh, Bosk, <laughs> Deadman, and Marksmanship. Uh, Tarok with Beskar, Fearless, Crackshot. Uh, occasionally you'll see him with Mando Optics and Marksmanship. And then Dirge with Sync Laser Cannons, Marksmanship, and Fearless. Uh, the Sync Laser Cannon, just give them that three die, sh three die gun the whole time. And uh, Fearless, I think, is actually a very underrated upgrade for him. Because you typically have, like, three points left over. Um, and, you know, Fearless is solid at range one, you know? I gotta love the name of the list. It's called the Fragile Bunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So thoughts on it? I, I with the sync laser cannon and fearless. I don't. On there. I don't do sync laser cannon on dirge, but people who do, it's not a bad upgrade. It's just three dice. You don't. You don't have to worry about bullseyeing people every time. That's true. All right. Uh, Rathos, did you want to cover any of the lists? Do you want to read through them, talk about them a little bit? Um. No, well, I mean, from this event, I don't think any, there's anything in here that's really like that um, crazy. Uh, I mean, the, the scum list is like, it's got stuff. And um, I'm not, I, I, <laughs> it, Pan will give me crap later because, you know, his official position is that scum is really bad right now. And, you know, he, he 4 0 this tournament. So, you know, it's really hard for me to push back on him right now on that specific thing. Um, <laughs> I will say that the the list is just that that list has just got a bunch of good pieces. It really like this the list itself is not indicative of really anything because it's just again a bunch of solid pieces. The it's more about the pilot that will make a list shine or not shine, right? And so uh, you know, is this the best of the best of the best? Probably not, but you know, a good pilot can make a list shine. And so uh, one of the things about uh, specifically South and Southern Ontario metas is that we tend to pick a bunch of non meta stuff, or even if like we pick, even if we are picking like rebels and it's Han, there's going to be a lot of variation of like what specific type of build it is. And so uh, I, typically, you know, we do see a lot of like variety. And so it, there's going to be weird stuff that shows up um, usually in any sort of like Ontario event. Yeah, even with Cam's list, he has like the vector thrusters on Keo. You don't typically see that. Or, uh, you know, not having Han with a title, which is kind of funny. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's a mistake. I'm pretty sure he just straight up said he didn't bring it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard that on a podcast. But yeah, the, I mean, the vector can. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Han Solo does not need the title. If you need to take evade, you are already in a lot of trouble. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. The last list that kind of piqued my interest was a five SF list, which I don't even own five of these, so I could never put this on the table. Um. All of them have the Special Forces Gunner. Um, Backdraft has Advanced Optics. Phasma has Deuterium Power Cells. 
the Hughes is the Proud Tradition Advanced Optics version. And then we have two Omega Squadrons. So two generics making it up there with automated target priority um, and fire control system. Alex, <laughs> your favorite <laughs> upgrade is in this list. I, I hate advanced or automated target priority so much. I don't want to be forced to shoot my range zero shots. That's, yeah, like that's the only justification. Like honestly, I would like to put Fanatical on those uh, experts, but I believe they don't have a talent slot um, because I would love to fly them next to like Phasma and then just keep on feeding them crits, um, and that way you know they could just evade all the time. But unfortunately, they just don't have it. So trying to find a good spot to spend one point for ATP is is tough. It's tough. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is from Nobby. Good old Nobby. Love that guy. They have something called Ani Onyx Onyxmas. I think that's how you say that. I don't know. Um, but essentially, this uh, he posts that this is their Christmas party uh, that they kind of do for his area in Australia. They actually had a huge turnout for this. Um, and of course, Nobby takes number one over. Everybody else. Who wants to take Nobby's list? Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yes. Nobby. He had resistance. And he had Poe. But the Falcon Poe. And I can respect that. I love Falcon Poe so much. Uh, trick shot. Hondo. Engine upgrade. The title and Ray Gunner. He had Snap Wexley with M9G8 and Crack Shot. Allo with R68 and crack shot. And then uh, Nine Nub with elusive pattern analyzer R4 and HLC. Uh, it's a solid list. It's, it's pretty close to what I flew uh, at the very beginning of the points change, except for instead of Nine Nub, I had uh, Merle and DB8. Uh, I got to say, we got to call about, we got to call Nobby out for not flying Zari. Like, come on, bro. You got to <laughs> make Zari good, Ben. Come on. <laughs> So what does everybody think about Poe with Hondo? Um I've I've not seen that before. Um So he um so I believe I faced him in Kyber Cup, I want to say. Um he flew a similar list except that it had Ray with uh Holdo and a bunch of um a bunch of the Ferrosphere paints and just being able to you know, move locks around with Holdo and then triggering stress and stuff like that. He is a very big uh, fan, uh, fan of having control on his list there and having I-6 Hondo that can either coordinate a friendly if you need to or uh, jam somebody at a distance um, at range three um, when you have almost perfect information is a really, really good piece to have um, for your list there. Um, he has the Falcon, or sorry, the... Um, he has Ray Gunner, uh, which provides him that that really good mod there uh, for him, and sh he can basically just kite around the board and allow the T70s to do their work and sh back him up as he needs to with Hondo. Um, so it's a it's a very versatile piece, and as long as you're not having Poe go directly into combat and kind of just kiting away, I think that you'll be really really successful with Hondo uh, on an I6 platform. Rathos, you gonna put Hondo on Poe? Um, I, I I super love Hondo. Uh, I think this is a meme more than anything. I think okay. this is, I think <laughs> this is Nobby saying that I can, I can mess with you while also winning. Uh, weird flex, uh, from Nobby, uh, submitting <laughs> this uh tournament, uh, and then taking it with a. Uh, with the uh, the meme meme Hondo choice, uh, uh, yeah, no, I I mean I think that there if you're thinking about like trying to figure out a jam, there are better ways to do it. Like uh, um, FTC still exists, so like you know there if you want to achieve specific things, none of these ships that he's partnered with really need coordinate. They're all kind of like self sufficient. They all have additional um, extra economy. So like I don't think Hondo's actually giving you anything for what it for what it's doing. So 
I, I, I honestly, that's what I think it is. I think it's, he's just memeing on uh, people. Uh, <laughs> just flexing on them. Yeah. Yeah, because it's actively bad if you want to like jam your M9 G8 carrier, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. if it was, uh, I mean, you'll see like C3PO on on Poe Falcon, which is a point cheaper. Uh, yeah. So if you really like, that's, that's actually right. useful in the coordinate. And the, the Hondo is a little bit scary. I don't. I wouldn't use Hondo for coordinating in this list. It would just be jamming the the other person. Mm-hmm. All right, the next list also has Hondo. This one has a Zam with the title, Notorious, Perceptive, Proton Bombs, and Deadman Switch. Then we have DGS-47 with Hondo, Grievous with Marksmanship, Afterburners, Impervium Plating, and the title, and Dirge with Proton Cannons, the title, Marksmanship, and Bombs. Uh, A force shift? CIS list um, with only three guns. <laughs> I guess your DGS is doing nothing but coordinating. Um, I did run Hondo on mine, but I had a five ship list and I used it mainly for Sun Fact to give Sun Fact double mods or to give them an evade and a focus token. So, all right. Who wants yeah. the the next one? So I'll do this one here. So we got uh, the uh, we got Dash Rendar coming in with Trick Shot, Mogba Yaro, Contraband Cybernetics, Rig Cargo Shoot, Ablative Plating, and the new Outrider title. Then we got the Battle of Yavin Luke, uh, and then Sabine Ren in the TIE Fighter uh, with uh, Beskar, and then Chopper in the uh, in the BCX with Dorsal Turret, Saw Guerrero Crew, Veteran Turret Gunner, and the Ghost title, just for the fun of it, uh, to round off this list there. Uh, this can definitely put in some damage there. I gotta say, I ran Chopper for a local event here. Um, I Kind of different build. It was Saw Guerrero with uh, Magba. Uh, but man, Chopper, when he gets into the block and you start jamming everybody that's touching him at range zero, and then you start shooting, man, Chopper can absolutely punish. Um, but it he he probably runs it as a screen for dash uh to like let dash get those range two and three shots uh with trick shot and then uh just shooting into those unmodded jam ships that are touching chopper uh when you get that going uh that can be real really tough to recover from uh but yeah it's a it's a good rebel list that doesn't have han <laughs> yeah and what, what did we learn jj about rig cargo shoot um you can, it doesn't obstruct Large base, yeah, it's the first nope. turn. <laughs> no. <laughs> you learn that the hard way. Yeah. All right. The next one, which we have seen a little bit of a uh, larger list style, but not this specific one. Who wants the Republic list? I'll do the Republic list. Look at this. Seven ships uh, and some fun sync council stuff. So this has uh, SOC Anakin. As Contrail with uh, Swarm Tactics, R4P, Saint Console, and the Bash Config. Oddball in the V-Wing with Synchronized Console, R4P, Plasma Torps, and the Bash Config. Uh, you got SOC Kickback, XOC Axe. And then uh, both Zs, uh, Slider with Fire Control, Synchronized Console, and Boost with Expert Handling and Synchronized Console. That's a crazy, crazy list. <laughs> yeah. You, what, what do you think about the plasma torps on Oddball? Um, if you have Saint Council and someone else on I five like Contrail, uh, you can you, you can make it work. I'm surprised one of them doesn't have like R three to kind of make it uh, closer to uh, you know, so it's a little bit easier to share locks and stuff. I also wonder who your swarm tactics thing, axe. Like I don't yeah. think yeah. slider or booze. Like it's just whoever's next to Contrail, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. Or your swarm tactics, Anakin down to five, so you could put that malice crit in there after you shot the plasma torp. That's a big brain move there. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's um, it, it's. This reminds me of a list that I flew actually for Nickel City. Um, 
Uh, I, it is weird not having the dedicated on it, you know. Um, and I gotta say, you turned me on to that man. That that <laughs> I was zero for six on my dedicated rerolls. Uh, but yeah, just having the bodies on there to to go out and contest, even if they're two dice shots, you know, they're usually going into unmodded ships, and you just you just never know. Two dice can do a lot of damage sometimes. Yeah, I think what's exciting about this tournament is we're seeing stuff show up that we've talked about being good, right? That just has not been um, being put on the table. So, for example, uh, out of the next two lists, there's a Lando setting. There's another setting with Han with no title, twice. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> does the title come in a specific pack? Maybe they maybe they just don't have it. I don't know. Uh, um, it's, it comes with the Falcon pack, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> But we also see a appearance of Thing Kyrell. And so I have a quick question, if anybody knows, how does the concussion missiles and Thane's ability kind of work together? Like, is there some weird combination I don't know about? Um, so or are they just you, running concussion missiles because they're good? Yeah, they, they're just running it to have that that missile shot there. So Thane's ability happens during the modified dice step. Um, so you would spend one of your results, either a focus or a hit or crit result in order to flip one of their um you can choose and flip any one of their face down damage cards and then if the attack hits from concussion missile then you flip another one that's there so if you're shooting against a one agility ship um and you just happen to only have a target lock on that ship and you roll a focus um you can spend that focus flip one of their existing cards hopefully and you can choose which one it is so hopefully it'll be like a fuel leak or um or like a direct hit, or even worse, um, you can flip a, over a structural damage to guarantee that it'll hit, um, and uh, and and just go from there. Oh, I've had them flip over a structural on me before with Thane. It was so tragic. Oh yeah. And then the honorable mention list, the one that I put in there anyway is Vader, Boy Vader, with not one, not two, not three, but seven Black Squadron TIE Fighters. So, I don't know. Rathos, have, have, you, have you ever ran Empire before? Would Have you ever put the this style of a list on the table? Like, I don't know if they, they have no real synergy, synergy together, but it is thematic. So I have run um, a bunch of... Uh, I mean, Empire is one of the factions that I fly. Uh, Basically, I don't, I don't usually fly um, eight ship lists or seven ship lists. Uh, that's not really my style. Uh, I have seen this um, list pop up a few times now. Uh, it is a good list. Um, the synergy is not so much that um, that like that you know there's a specific relationship between Vader and the Black Squadrons. It's more that. Uh, if you have a lot of ships and you just have a lot of variant, it's kind of like how the old the the last meta was, where essentially if you have a lot of low cost ships with high agility, uh, you can do very well on objectives. And so if you know how to fly that, you know how to do that well. You have the hammer with Vader. They can't really afford to go after Vader because they'll lose the objective race to all of the the black squads. So you know it's it's again it's about a it's a, it's, a, it's a tactics question. And so it, the the funny thing is that like these lists that were strong in the previous meta are still like the the idea of it is still strong now, but things have shifted because of the 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 high efficiency and things like Han and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, if you have good variants, uh, this list can crush a lot of stuff. I just think it's fun to me. To be honest with you, I was running it when we had you know the original Vader right, and just putting as many as I could in there. I don't own seven ties, though. <laughs> Not at least in Empire. Um, I don't know very many people that do, but like, I think that back in 2.0, this list did very well uh, back when you could run sense on Vader because you can like direct those ties to go in and block whoever you needed to with sense. Um, you know, without sense, you can still kind of achieve the same idea or same tactic to a lesser degree uh but as far as like grammy objectives i mean this is this is really tough right because you could just send three of those uh seven tie fighters to grab objectives and then just run away and you still have to contend with uh with four more ties and vader for the rest of the match like man <laughs> 
I have a also honorable mention. Oh, okay. Uh, someone took my scum list at this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> How'd they do? Uh, uh, they were 30th out of 33. Uh, but <laughs> but someone brought my list, and I was shocked to see that. Well, there you go, Alex. And what you need to do is reach out to them and talk to them a little bit and be like, hey, let me explain to you how to run this list. Just straight joust your opponent. That's all you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the triggers. That's the hard part. All right. Let's move over to the Bombers, Brews, and Blasters that Nickel City put on. This weekend, if there was not enough X-Wing with all the Vancouver stuff and all of that, this also was streamed by Greg last yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Um, uh, yeah, correct. <laughs> this one, it does not show cut because they decided to not use the software properly for cut. But um, essentially, the top they did a f four rounds with the top four, um, top four placement going in to a top cut of four, I guess, right? Yeah, top cut of four. Yeah, sorry. That me the medicine uh, is kicking in. Um, uh -oh. So this this was an extended tournament, right, JJ? Yes, that is correct. It was an extended with a uh, band list, I believe. And they gave out a store invite, correct? Yes, that is correct, yes. And I don't actually believe I read in the rules that it couldn't be extended. I don't believe that's actually specified format yeah. wise. Yes, uh, extended is a viable um, is a viable format to be run for store championship. I believe as long as they um, use the ban list in effect for it. Um, we know that for packs that's coming up uh, in two weeks, that uh, it will also be an extended tournament as well. Um, that will be using the ban list for. Um, for the first event and this main event as well. And then they, they'll have like a fangs out, which is a separate event, not related to a store championship that will use extended uh, without a ban list where you can run whatever you want. But, uh, but yeah, it is, uh, it was definitely an extended event with Ben. When, when is that one? Uh, that is this Sunday actually of PAX, the last day of PAX. Oh, that sounds fun. That sounds dirty. Alex, why are we not going to that? Just should we just go down there for just Sunday? I really want to go to PAX. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> uh. Well, why don't we cover some of these lists? I I am interested. Um, I am interested to talk a little bit about extended meta, especially because there's a pilot in this rebel list that we almost never see. Um. JJ, what is this Rebel list that Shane brought and won with? Yeah, so this was a great list. I, I got to see uh, the first and last game, and it was just fantastic. So uh, we got Chopper in the VCX with Zeb Crew, uh, which we'll come back to in a second. Uh, Dorsa Turret, Ezra Bridger, Gunner, and Fire Control System. Eseki Tuketu, uh, which is the K-Wing pilot, uh, running Perceptive Co-Pilot, Barrage Rockets, Agile Gunner, and Munitions Failsafe. Then we have the Battle Yavin Garvin Drace with APTs and R5K6. It's a regen, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And then Garvin Darklighter in the E-Wing with Advanced Optics, Proton Torpedoes, and Deadeye Shot to round off the list. So if you're not familiar with Zeb uh, Crew for Chopper, essentially at range zero, uh, both you and the ship that you're touching at range zero can uh, spend focus tokens as normal uh, when performing a range zero attack. Uh, the funny part about it is that if you're already touching Chopper, you're going to get double jams, which means that you're probably not going to get uh, the focus token to spend uh, to use on that range zero attack. And then Chopper can use Isekis to Teku's uh, perceptive pilot's focuses on his attacks while he's attacking our range zero. Uh, so that is a really great uh, interaction there, uh, just being able to use that um, and finding a way for Chopper to get that focus token uh, to spend on those range zero attacks, which could be real, really good. And then, of course, you got Ezra with the dorsal turret uh, that allows you to uh, take that second shot after you do that range zero shot. So uh, it could be absolutely devastating when it when it actually does work. And in this case, Shane did very, very well uh, against our runner up and uh, and won that uh, uh, the the tournament it was great yeah and Rathos that Rathi 
<laughs> that next yeah. list looks a little bit more up your alley. If you've been playing since 1.0, did you used to put some of those um, resistance bombers on the table? He left. Oh, sorry, I'm actually oh. I'm actually taking off now. Yeah. So. Oh. Okay. So, oh so yeah, yeah. That. No worries, Ben. <laughs> okay. See ya. Uh, yeah. So we had a local of mine that played a lot of the resistance bombers. Um. Why am I forgetting his nickname? He was on OCX all the time. Padre. He ran resistance bombers a lot. And they can be silly. I don't think they're good. Yeah, though. I think I think the, this game was decided by one point, actually. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Hey, I submitted for my extended list a cat Ben Tenny Ray list. <laughs> right? Remember? In yeah, Resistance yeah, yeah, like, yeah right. throw it together. Why not? Uh, yeah, so this has Cat, <laughs> who is oh i'm trying to do this from memory that's not good okay uh after you perform a primary attack the defender at range zero to one of at least one friendly device you roll one die an additional die so you can take your front arc to four and your side arcs to three if there's a device still there when you're shooting <laughs> so it has heroic um atp to piss me off uh veteran tail gunner <laughs> Skilled Bombardier, Concussion Bombs, and Proton Bombs. Uh, and there's no delayed fuses there. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to so, say. Like, how um, are you holding bombs? <laughs> so you're not getting Cat's ability. Uh, ben Tenny, that's the one where he gives you the rattle condition after you perform an attack. If they're in your um, turret arc, give them a rattled. And that's after a bomb or a mine at 0 to 1 detonates. Uh, they suffer one crit, and then they can remove the card. Uh, as an action, they can re remove the card as long as there's no bombs or mines at range zero to one. Uh, Bed Tenny has FCS, ATP, Novice Tech, VTG, Skilled Bombardier, Concussion Bombs, and Thermal Detonators. Which kind of sounds kind of scary. And then you have Ray with Marksmanship, Corsella, Rose, Finn, and the title. I've not seen that Ray before. And then you have Chorus Capellum with Dorsal, R4, Seismics, and Targeting Computer. Get that lock and that calculate, baby. And then steal a green token from them. Uh, people are very bad against bombs. <laughs> and that's what I'm assuming is going on over here. Yeah, you just use Ray as a hammer on the side and then let everybody, like, either you fly at the bombers or you fly at Ray. You could pick. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> uh, that takes off a lot of board space. Yeah. And you can shoot a lot between the front arc and the VTG, so you're actually out putting a fair amount of dice. I just... You know, do you really need skill bomb deer when you can... Or do you need heroic? Do you, no, wait, here. No. Do you need ATP when you can have delayed fuses and actually trigger people's abilities? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> See, I would almost want the delayed fuses specifically for the concussion bombs, right? You know? Yeah, for... Yeah. You can set it up. You can use Cat's ability. You can get five dice at range one, just like Ray. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're hitting also... your own bomb, but you can do it. Yeah, I, you can also... I mean, it'll, it'll kind of break up the synergy there, but you can also uh, put in, what, Paige, Tico, I think? Uh, crew? Yeah. No, the gunner. Uh, yeah, the gunner, yeah. And that way you can uh, fire a shot and then drop a bomb right after that. And that way you can um, like have agency on where that bomb is going to be dropped and um, and then get off Cat's ability uh, using that as well. Yeah, Cat is an I one, so you yeah. can you could probably use use that ability beforehand. You know. Yeah. So lots of bombs, super fun. If Andre could see this, he, he'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the other list is not quite extended-ish, huh? uh, but the other list to cover was from Brew Dude, uh, running Wes, good old Wes, with Snapshot and Cluster Missiles and R4. Such a dick. <laughs> snapshot and, Wes Jansen. And then just jam them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love go. that upgrade on Wes. It is so good. <laughs> I, I ran that for a little while. People don't like it. 
if you it, you have to fly around it. I guess it's pretty easy to fly around. I think if you do it right, but it's just kind of funny because you force people to fly differently against it. <laughs> uh, and you could do like it also like that cluster missiles is real mean too, right? So you can like just shoot someone and then like shoot the guy next to him and then jam that person. Yeah. So you don't even have to shoot the guy that you target locked, which is pretty funny. I mean, you do, but you don't have to use his ability to shoot yeah. the other guy. All right. And then they have Boy Luke, then Dutch with Sat Salvo cluster missiles, R3 and Seismic, uh, Wedge with Crackshot marksmanship, and Sabine with Crackshot Beskar. A Wing Sabine, baby. Mini Fang Fighter. Yeah. That's one of my favorite Sabines, actually. Oh. Very happy it's not two points. <laughs> yeah, for real. Now, I wonder, would it be more worth Dutch carrying uh, a torpedo? Um, to, oh, no, you can't fit the points. Never mind. Uh, just to get more charges for Sat Salvo. But yeah, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get enough with the cluster missiles where you get four, but you're probably not doing bonus attacks. Exactly. Or if you are, you're not set saloing them. I don't like set salvo on that. I'd rather just take like a proton bomb. Yeah. All right. We also had a, another extended tournament at the Cornish Nationals this weekend. It was not in Washington, uh, even though that's what I have up there. Uh, that was definitely overseas. In <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know. <laughs> that's just my bad. Is it, is it Wales? No, no, no. I just left WA in there because I've been sick. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You you don't do these things, and so I have to do them, and I've been sick, so it's just a mistake on my behalf. Fair, fair. Um, This one, we uh, have a couple extended uh, lists, but um, not too much variance, but this must also have been an extended event um, that they had. So... Alex, what did the winner bring to for it? Chris Burnett, right? That's the winner there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he has Han Solo with Trick Shot, Perceptive Pista and Title, Boy Luke, uh, Juke Keo with Vectored Cannons, and then Gavin Darklighter, the E-Wing that makes crits. He's got Dead Eye Shot, which works really well with his ability. Uh, FCS, Proton Torps, and R3. Um, Gavin's kind of cool. I like him over Corn Horn. Corn Horn and E Wing is ludicrously priced at six points. Gavin is only five. But yeah, just uh, like his ability too. It's not. Uh, it's kind of like like Drea's, right? So it's like as long as they're in the front arc of Gavin, anyone shooting uh, them can change one hit to a crit. As long as the defenders in Gavin's front arc. Yeah, and that's that's really, really good, especially when you start factoring in uh, Han's double tap, you know, with trick shot, and then follow up by a a, tor- a proton torpedo from Luke that's almost guaranteed to have two crits every time. Um, it, it can get really, really good. I mean, I, as far as salvage, good luck trying to get a crate and survive against this list because you're, you're not going to carry it from one than around, like, and Gavin could get the locks early just being an E-Wing, you know, right yep. off uh, first round. So he can come in with a double mod. So you can, you know, shoot twice with Han, a Pro Tour from Luke, a Pro Tour from Gavin, and then a Juke Keo shot and wonder why your opponent's still living after all that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I will say, I will say, I don't know if I would wonder if the opponent's still living. Hopefully at that point, that opponent is, that, that ship is not living. It's a, a high health ship. Yeah, right. um, yeah. And it's kind of funny. This weekend, I, my last opponent on Saturday was uh, uh, Mr. Springle, and he ran five T-70s and didn't expect me to decloak Blackout and five straight turn two, five straight with Kylo, and then five straight with um, everybody, basically everybody but Midnight. And so I don't know if it was Kara or Jess, whichever one it was, that he brought, but one of his C70s didn't even get to shoot. <laughs> I, felt, I felt bad, but you know, I mean, when when you have blackout throwing dice like that, right? And then Kylo throws dice. Now, I will say my dice were a little hot, but you know, I got you get bullseyes, and then 
you know, Kylo's always got extra mods and, um, you know, then, you know, good old Malaris just sitting there saying, here, would you like a, a, a Magpulse so you don't get a focus either? All right. Thanks. <laughs> See ya. Um, it was hilarious. Uh, I didn't win. I lost that game in the last round. Um, cause the dice were very unforgiving. I don't think Joel rolled more than two or three natties for the first round. <laughs> with his, his his T70 either. Um, and he didn't have uh, Heroic, so, you know, there's that as well. But speaking of Heroic, the next list is a Resistance list we've seen a little bit of, uh, with Lulu with Shield, Predator, Marksmanship, Zori with Wartime, Plasma, R4, Dorsal, Elo with Swarm Tactics, Heroic, and Jamming Beam. And then we have Temin with Heroic, Ferrisphere Paint, R6-D8, and then Jess rounding out the list with M9-G8, Electronic Baffle, and no pile or no Astromech. Which I thought was a little interesting. Usually you see like an Astromech on Jess, right? Like, she has on M9-G8. Well, I mean, oh, you, does, you, mean right, uh, crazy. you mean an Astromech with charges. That's what you mean. Yeah. But an yeah. Astromech with charges, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. I mean, it's pretty solid, right? I mean, you're even though you're not getting the full efficiency of Jess with uh, without like a uh, like a BBH uh, Astromech, for instance, uh, where she can use those charges for rerolls. As long as you stick her close by to another friendly, there, um, she's still able to get that reroll with her ability. Um, so you can kind of mitigate that ability and, and use that right um and if you're flying this close range as well you know with uh with other ships that can't really go fast namely uh zori then you're always going to have those rerolls available to you for the most part there for you um but yeah still very solid list. this is uh something that we see see become a staple at least this archetype becoming a staple uh in the resistance uh, just a lot of good efficiency with those um those i5 ships and then Temin and jessica to to fill out that uh those other two slots there very good yep. another appearance with swarm tactics hello get jess up to five yep jj you gonna do this empire one Oh yes, I definitely want it's this. Got one of your favorite ships in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got uh, Merrick Steel with fire control system and shield upgrade. Uh, Tomex Bren with uh, set, set salvo barrage rockets and bombets. Flight leader Ubo uh, in the um, my boy tie uh, heavy. Yeah, the tie heavy, the brute uh, with sync laser cannon, Tiber Saxon crew, uh, and targeting assist, and then Juno Eclipse with marksmanship, fire control system, and homing missiles, and fifth brother uh, in the tie B one with instinctive aim and homing to, uh, homing missiles uh, to round off this list here. Uh, not a single appearance of Vader. I think this is like the first Empire list as we reviewed that does not have Vader at all. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's something I've seen played early on in the early meta at my locals uh, uh bearing at this uh flight leader Ubel, if you're not familiar with what uh Ubel does is essentially when he or another friendly ship within range two uh defends uh he gets a bonus attack against that ship there and when you start factoring that in with uh tiber saxon if you happen to um to punch in just damage cards not crits uh you can spend Tiber saxon uh to um to get strain onto that ship and since he's an i5 more than likely you got juno and Merrick and tomax who can then take follow-up shots onto that same ship and just punish them completely and just decimate that particular ship it is really really good um i it's a it's an archetype that should do better um it, the only caveat for this is that the tight brute style is not the best. Um, it can go fast, but as far as turning and being tight corners and keeping pursuit, it definitely suffers um, from being able to keep up. So you do have to learn how to fly that tie heavy um, to to make sure it stays where it needs to in order to get its free shots there. It's nice that it can use the sync console on the back. Um, so when you blow past people, you can still use it, still get the three dice. Uh, but man, this is such like a <laughs> FU kind of list. I love this. This is so fun. Like you got homing missiles on Juno and Fifth Brother, so you're just auto damage from that. You're gonna get shot 
with Diver Saxon. So then Merrick can shoot, then Tomax can shoot again and re-roll after you spent your focuses not dying to Tiber. <laughs> and then like the bombers and Ubel doesn't have uh shields. So anytime you damage them, they're damage cards, so Ubel's gonna shoot again. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it just needs more gross. pockets. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 I love this list. This is something stupid. I love it. This is such like a, I don't care what you're doing. I'm just going to hit you with so many things. Yeah. And Merrick uh, would love to to get a shot in into a shieldless uh, ship that's strained and uh, has a lot of hole left because he gets those crits in and boom, you, you're going to make somebody pop. And then Fifth Brother's also adding more crits. Like, oh, just, yeah. Just, damage. <laughs> right just in case you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if I was on one health, I'd tell Fifth Brother to roll those holy whistles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, oh, right. Man. I've I've had that before, and I've rolled them, and then re-rolled them, and gotten one hit out of it, and then they natty out of it. And Perfect. Like, God damn it! <laughs> I looked God right in the eye and told him, "Go for it." <laughs> so. This next one's kind of crazy because this, I believe, was like first in Swiss, right? Because it's got the number one volume. Yes. Uh, which nuts. So this is uh, a, another resistance list. This has Venny, the one uh, that gets the, like, add a focus result, I believe, right? Uh, when you defend, yeah. if the attacker's in your, oh, any friendly ship's uh, turret at arc, you can add a yeah. focus result to your roll. Uh, so that works you know, attacking and defending. Perceptive co pilot makes sense. VTG, agile gunner, ion bombs, and electric baffle. Then you have Poe, um, Falcon Poe, a build I've never seen in my life. It's Swarm Tactics, Trick Shot, uh, the title, Ray Gunner, Chewbacca, and Electric Baffle. Chorus Capellum again, Wartime Loadout, Dorsal, uh, ATP. And then the uh, R4E droid, the one that lets you rotate and calculate, and possibly also pass the calculate if need be. Then you have Elo with M9G8, Marksmanship, and Heroic. Uh, can, can I don't I ask know. A question? Can I ask a quick question? Um, if Vinny gets to add the result when it's in anybody's turreted arc, right? Friendly would one, you, yeah. Would you, would you not put, like, underslung blaster cannon or something on LO so that you get a turret arc? So of oh, ship? man, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> then every ship has a turret arc, right? And, and with that, you can point it out the back or the front. I don't think it has to go out the back, does it? Does it? Maybe it does. I don't remember. No, no, no. Still, you can no. rotate it around wherever you yeah, want. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so not that you're going to ever use it, ever, ever in your life, but then you would you would always, Vinny's ability would never not trigger because everybody else has a turret. Well, then he's also works on themselves. So, like, you have Agile uh, Cutter. You you know where you're going. As long as they're in a turreted arc. A friendly turreted arc. So, it works really well with the A-Wings, actually, because their front arc is not actually a front arc. So, yeah. Uh, that's Swarm Tactics, though. <laughs> I have no clue what you're doing. Are you Swarm Tactics team Vinny? No, I would love for them to swarm tactics chorus, right? To steal the green token yes, at I six, exactly. Which is yes, the dream. Exactly what, but what do you do? <laughs> I mean, I get that you're bringing wartime loadout, you know, to have the extra shields and stuff. But uh, good luck trying to get somebody in bullseye I one. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, they don't need to be bullseye, right? It's just as long as they're in one of your turrets. Yeah. No, I mean, like for the 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 wartime ability to not oh, be able yeah, to cancel yeah. points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that that's crazy. I don't know why. <laughs> that's that's insane for like hitting that high and just crushing everyone. Yeah, I think Venny with a bunch of A wings would be really fun. Or add Ray and A wings on this, and man, it would be just. I had a such local a list. that played a lot of Venny, and she. Uh, I think she just ran like Ray Gunner Perceptive or something like that. And it was just like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is going to tank a lot of damage. I mean, hell, you can run uh, Venny and Ray and probably another uh, another one of those bombers and an A-Wing or BBA yeah, I mean, probably. 
You have any six points in race seven, so you got seven points left over. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, (laughs) The cool part is that that droid also lets you transfer a calculate to a friendly ship in your firing arc. So if you do, if you did the the rotate to get the calculate, you can pass it to Venny too. So you have more focus mods, especially it's like you have no shot with uh, chorus. It would be funny to uh, you pass it off and then swarm them and then steal somebody else's so can yep. to give it back to, <laughs> to Chorus. Oh, my God. That's so good. I like that. Right, so that sounds like an Alex built there. <laughs> I know. Like, I wouldn't do swarm tactics on Poe, but he's the pay lob of resistance. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. Yeah, but, you know, oh, he's man. a one. <laughs> he's a one until you swarm tactics. And yes, <laughs> should have swarm tactics on LO2. Bring them all up to six. Why not? <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next store champ. We have Birmingham Barons in Alabama that had a store champ. And Velvet oh. Buddha, our very own, won the event 4-0. to I think Velvet Buddha already has a invite, so hopefully it got handed down. I think he does. But um, they had 16 people or 17 people, something like that. And we had... A little bit different list for the most part. This is kind of similar um, to what we've been seeing. But JJ, what did Velvet Buddha bring? Uh, so he brought the starter Vader, uh, which has hate ion missiles, afterburners, and then we got Volt Scarus uh, with Ruthless and Shield upgrade. And I believe this is the TIE Interceptor version of him. Uh, Tomax friend with uh, this is the standard loadout version with True Grid plasma torpedoes and ion bombs. Deathfire, also the uh, standard loadout version of the TIE bomber uh, with Swiss Approach, Connor Nets, and Proton Bombs, and then Merrick Steel with Afterburners, Marksmanship, and Ruthless uh, to round off this list here. Uh, Volt Scarus is becoming a pilot that we're, gonna, we're seeing a lot more often just because of his ability. And if you're not familiar with it, essentially he starts off with a charge. Um, and as long as he has an active during the engagement phase, he can spend that charge to perform an action. Um, if you are not stressed and you use it, you can uh, take advantage of the Time Interceptor's chassis ability to link it into a barrel roll or a boost. Um, so he has perfect knowledge of where everybody is, reposition, art dodge, um, or um, just going for like an evade if he knows he can't get out of arcs. Uh, just a lot, a lot of utility for Volt Scarus. And then he can disengage, recharge that uh, that token, gain a strain, and um, and then just come back for another pass if he needs to. A uh, lot of great utility for Volt Scarus there. And then having those tie bombers on there, being able to use Ruthless to um, to get those extra mods as they need to. Uh, those bombers have a lot of hole, so they are great fodder for converting results. All right, Alex, what did Charles the Pink Panther run in Resistance? This is a five ship Resistance list. But it's not the ones you think. <laughs> uh, before I get to the crazy parts, so we're just going to do Zori, the Plasma Tor Bar 4 Dorsal, uh, Veniza, Barrage Rockets, Marks with Chip, uh, Snap, R68, HLZ, Jess Pava, R2D2, Jamming Beam. See those a lot. Uh, you don't see this four point ship, though. You got another Y Wing in there. Tenza Naz. There's a lot of qualifiers in this ability, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so while a friendly ship at range zero to two performs an attack, if the defender has a friendly ship to the attacker in each of its side arcs, the attacker may reroll one attack die. <laughs> so if you're on both sides to an enemy ship, you can reroll one die at zero to two when, when you are attacking. Actually, it's, it's any attacker, so it's actually pretty cool. Um, and then it's got plasma twerps and M9G8. Uh, a little anti synergistic with that. Uh, but also, it's pretty funny to use that. And it's just um, a normal attack, too. So uh, later on in the scrum, you can reroll your HLC shots or uh, your brush rockets, your other plasma torp, in addition to the M9G8 charge. 
who I would assume you put on like Veniza, right? It's probably a U98 because yeah. Snap's yeah. got R6. Yeah, give her a reroll for those barrage rockets. Uh, yeah, pretty good. It's a it's a funny list. All right, on to the next one is Highlander Games in New Jersey. This one is, I believe this one was the one that Chris from Yaxby went to. Um, yeah, I believe so, yeah. Uh, here we have a couple of different lists. Walter Stokes won the event with a FO list with Blackout with Trickshot, Targeting Synchronizer, Plasma Torpedoes, and Sensitive Controls. Kylo Ren with Brilliant Evasion, Malice, Predator, Pattern Analyzer, and the Jamming Suite. Magpults, Malaris, Gideon with sensor buoys, biocrypt codes, Agent Terex, and Tac Officer, and then good old Scorch with feedback ping, ion missiles, and bomblet generator. Uh, this is definitely a different uh, first order list than what we had been seeing. I'm not sold, I don't think, on the blackout targeting synchronizer. I don't like blackouts, not ever double modded. Almost ever. Like, I guess I guess you could coordinate, right? You could coordinate from Gideon, or you could give the calculate away to Gideon, and then you become double modded. If you coordinate, you couldn't have used that set of controls earlier that turn because Blackout would be stressed. True. Which is oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Holy cow. Okay, yeah, I'm really, really interested so in how they ran this Blackout. list. I, I have no <laughs> idea how they made this work. But man, holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you still have like Terex on there, so they can still have a double mod if they take the lock. Um, that's true. It's probably what they're doing then, right? But like, that's still just one calculate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, to be fair, you're not always using sensitive controls on blackout, right? Because you don't always need to boost and barrel roll. Um, it, it's very situational. I mean, you could essentially do a blue maneuver. Um, you know, be unstressed, put yourself in front of a rock. Um, to trigger his ability with trick shot, and then the following turn, and you can coordinate. Um, the following turn with Gideon. Um, if you don't want to use sensitive controls, uh, although you probably should, and just go from there, right? Um, the other part of it too is uh, Gideon can coordinate Scorch uh, to get in a good position to drop the bomblet um, for the following turn if he needs to. Um, there's a, a lot of different things you could do. I do love the addition of sensor buoys uh, for the list that allows Gideon to extend the range for the jam uh, or grab a lock uh, for for a follow-up shot afterwards. I hope people realize or remember that you can just shoot the sensor buoys. It does have health. It's too, it's too yeah. health. It's not like great, but you can shoot them, by the way. All right, JJ, what did Dan run? So we got a Sunfac list that uh, that did very well here, and I like this one a lot. So we got Sunfac with Ensnare, Predator, Marksmanship, and Targeting Computer, uh, Dirge with uh, Proton Cannons, Contraband, the Title, and Seismic Charges. We got Grievous with Marksmanship, uh, Impervium, and Shield Upgrade, and the Title. And then DBS-404, the Siege of Coruscant version uh, with uh, the APTs, Contingency Protocol, and the Strut Lock Overrides. And then DGS-407, which is that very very popular hmp uh with cluster missiles kalani uh attack droid munitions fail safe and the repulsor list stabilizers to round off that list uh i like the addition of kalani on this list here since you do have um at least two ships that do want to get uh bullseyes uh for the most part for their offensive potential namely sunfac and dirge uh being able to get that lock ahead of time um to essentially double mod your your shots against so your opponents can be very very powerful uh particularly sunfac um if you're able to um set yourself up to get the ensnare and bring them into your bullseye um and rolling five dice at range one against a uh with double mods uh can be very very good 
and then Dirge, of course, being able to use Proton Cannons into a uh, um, with a target lock and a focus um, can be very good to push those extra crits through uh, and uh, and do some real damage there. So I like this list a lot. It has a lot of utility. All right, Alex, the last list that went has your favorite pilot in it. <laughs> so this is actually... Uh, very close, if not exactly what we saw in that one random tournament in England. Uh, it has Lando in the Falcon in the loadout that I do not agree upon. But it has C3PO, <laughs> Ray Gunner, Contraband, and the title. You got Elo. Okay, well, let me explain what Lando does, I guess, because Lando's ability is really bonkers. Um, I love Lando. He's, he's disgusting. So he has three charges. That you know reoccur, not all at once. Uh, after you fully execute a red maneuver or perform a red action, uh, you may spend any number of charges to choose that many friendly ships at range zero to two, and the chosen ships may perform an action even while stressed. And that includes him. And the the Falcon title lets you boost after you do things, um, so you can do like a sloop or whatever. Uh, Lando ability yourself and someone else. Uh, and for Lando ability yourself, you could do a red boost and then Lando someone else as well. It's kind of funny. It works really well with the other ships that he's bringing. The other ones, uh, he has LO with R68 marksmanship and heroic. But he's got three Y wings, the three three cost ones. Chorus with dorsal wartime cluster missiles. You know, a lot of, a lot of chorus in these top cots everywhere you know uh liga with diamond boron missiles wartime loadout and shaza with plasma torps wartime and dorsal so you can just have double modded torps um, at i3 uh just by having lando there coordinating things my only problem is that i don't like ray gunner which is blasphemous i know but like you could do so many more things with the 10 points <laughs> Uh, I prefer like Agile Gunner and Corsella because yeah, I, I was am gonna say, so yeah. stressed so many times. And yeah. I do Lone Wolf because, uh, you know, after you do your coordinate shenanigans, it works. Like it, it does. It doesn't seem like it will work. It works. You can coordinate someone and then do the red boost. And now you're not at range two anymore. And you have a calculate from C3PO. And another action because it's a red boost. So you give yourself a target lock and you got Lone Wolf. Just do whatever you want. I like this a lot. I, well, okay. I like it because it has Lando. I don't like the triple Y Wing setup for it. But uh, it's, it's fun. I think they should, they're yeah. going for the beef. And and I played Lando with, with Y Wings and I'm still unimpressed with the Y Wings. <laughs> they're okay. Um... They just can't be the brunt of your offense. The like Y wings are eight health with the wartime. Nine, five shields, Nine. four hull. God, that's a lot of hull. Uh, that's a lot of shields. Yeah, yeah, five shields. Um, yeah. I barely had enough shield tokens. <laughs> had to dip into my OCX beer can ones. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, let's 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 round the uh, show out talking about the Western Canada World Open qualifier. We have. A couple of graphs. This one was obviously because it's World Qualifier. We cover a little bit more um, about the the uh, about more the tournament. Depth. Yeah, in depth. So we have some statistics for you. Rebel was the highest taken faction of the day with Empire, then Republic, and then Resistance, FO, Scum, and little old CIS with only three lists uh, coming in there. We also see faction performance. CIS <clears throat> uh, may have only had three lists, but they performed better than every faction but Empire this time around. How many of them made the cut? They overperformed. They still overperformed. <laughs> Uh, faction records. I guess we don't have, we don't usually go over those, but the top cut looks like we have Rebel, FO, Empire, Republic, and Resistance. 
So before we get into the pilots, a little bit about this event is this was actually a really cool event, and I wish I'd known about it and could afford to go to these things because what they did is essentially they did the longer days, right? You know, like you do the five rounds and you do, um, you know, or five or six rounds and then you do the cut. And the way the cut worked is as you dropped out of the cut, you got to buy into the next day tournament, uh, round one buy, and you could just jump into that that tournament, which was also a store champ tournament. So they were handing out store kits for that. Now, I did not go find that tournament. Um, Dana, maybe JJ will find it and we can cover that next week. But I just thought that was a very interesting way to get people to continue to play, um, even as they kind of scrub out for the day. Um, so, yeah, so I think that was pretty cool. I like that format quite a bit. Uh, we have a little bit of a difference in pilots here. We have Tomex, Bren, and Reimer up at the top over Loop this time, which is surprising, but only by one, only by one. Um, but they, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to see Han not make it in the top nine. Every single Empire list brought Tomex, Bren. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yep, everybody likes them. And I guess this isn't the specific which one it is, right? Um, obviously, Elo's up there. Keo's up there. Bodica was a hot option. And of course, Jonas. Uh, there wasn't a lot in composition. Um, it's, it, essentially, you kind of see the 5 T70 ish style list. You see the Han um, and Friends list, the Bomber Invader list, the Arc list. Um, then you have somewhat of a generic ish FO list. Um, but none of the compositions really stood out. So there was quite a bit of variety um, in what was being ran. With that being said, this is kind of your top cut. There is a person that ran a seven ship and went four and two with CIS with four HMPs and three droids. Um, nice. We, we're going to cover that list. If you, if you didn't know, we're going to cover that list. <laughs> so, I'm shocked. <laughs> So that's kind of what your top cut is. What we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and start covering the lists. And I'll let the two of you fight out who wants to cover the winner. Jo jo Jokas, Jokas uh, won, I believe, by like 10 points over the runner up there. Um, wow. So who wants to take the first list? Uh, you could take Republic. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. Yeah. This is a lot of SOC that has SOC Oddball, SOC Wolf, SOC Jag, SOC Kickback, SOC Axe, and then Boost with Predator. Don't need the other. Don't don't want dedicated. Don't 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 need anything else. Just Predator on Boost. Uh, you know it's it hits hard, right? And you can get evades. It could be tanky if you need with the all the token sharing with Born for this. Uh, and I love me some boost. Uh, and it's six ships and a lot of health. So I like it. I feel like a lot of it's more on the pilot than the list building itself. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. Not to mention the setup for this is like what five cards or I'm sorry, seven cards and you're good and a bunch of shields. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. Seven cards and an ass load of charges. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely like seeing X making more of an impact um, coming into the list. It was a, a ship that I felt that um, definitely benefited from the change of ability um, from the customized version to the standardized uh, version and just being able to have that uh, that extra uh, torrent there uh, with his ability, especially with uh, barrage rockets, giving it a three die gun uh, was a nice change for this list there. Yeah, definitely. So um, so let's go over to the first order. Uh, yep. So we got Kylo Ren. Uh, this is the Whisper version. Uh, he has the Intense Jamming Suite, Brilliant Evasion, Malice, Predator, and Pattern Analyzer. Uh, we got Wrath, who is also the uh, the I-5 TIE Whisper with Intense Jamming Suite, Predator, Bronxmanship, Pattern Analyzer, and Ion Cannon. Uh, Midnight with Fanatical Pattern Analyzer. Uh, Commander Malarus with Cluster Missiles this time. And then we got Grudge and the TIE Bomber uh, with the, um, the TIE-FO Bomber with Cluster 
cluster missiles, thermal detonator, skilled bombardier, and feedback ping to round off the list. And I'm sorry, I meant to say cluster mines, not missiles on Grudge there. Two episodes so, in a row, JJ. Yeah, exactly. Two <laughs> episodes in a row, man. So um absolutely love this list. This is a version of a list that I actually was testing on first order for a while. I mean, because I think Grudge um, still has... Uh, a lot of utility in this faction uh, with the ability to boost and drop those uh, cluster mines in there and uh, and do a lot of work there. Um, I'm I think we're seeing more and more people taking a more offensive version of Midnight uh, with like Pattern Analyzer and Fanatical um, and just really helping Midnight be a more contributing piece in the offensive portion of it. Um, I'm still a fan of the coordinated Midnight, especially with Grudge to allow him to take uh, barrels when he needs to uh, to get into position to boost for the following turn. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is really good. And Wrath can be a menace, being able to double tap with his ability, um, especially if you're able to get um, get a, a red token or an orange token onto your ship in Bullseye. Um, just being able to set that up perfectly. If you get between two ships, you can do an ion cannon shot out the back and then a follow up with a bullseye shot up front uh, can be very, very powerful for the list. And uh, with five ships on the board, you can cover a lot of objectives and uh, and, and be good. Yeah, people, if they don't understand the secret to wrath is you bump them into people. Then you get your red focus, then you do whatever you want. You pretty yep. much should have that range zero bullseye shot. So it's like a semi-free bonus attack. Yep. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of aggressive midnights, did I did remember that FO list that I played for us for NCX? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tanner stole that <laughs> and played it <laughs> <a new bunch, laughs> yeah. champ uh, over the weekend. <laughs> he, uh, I had crack shot a targeting synchronizer and targeting synchronizer for a really convoluted reason that actually came up in the game. Uh, he had. Uh, targeting synchronizer, fanatical, and proud tradition, which I thought is you know I could respect something like that. Yeah. Um, did you like, did you make him flip the proud tradition? Is a question. I wasn't there. Annoying. I, oh, I, okay, okay. I wanted to go. I really did, but I couldn't go. Oh, uh, yeah. Tragically, um, so I didn't make it. I didn't get the dunk on people in Lando. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's move on to the empire uh we got tomax bren uh the customized version with sat salvo barrage rockets and bomb generator uh captain Jonas with sat salvo barrage rockets and bomb generator as well rhymer with barrage rockets ion bomb sat salvo you got those classic three tie bombers uh that can just or ruin tie your... five just you wait. oh yeah that's right that's right More of fire <laughs> that's right that fire uh so so i wonder like do you actually fly this in a in a like a block formation i, I think you would like separate that fire right like you need to well i mean yeah you should not launch bombs at your own ships yeah. yes <laughs> um, especially with a rack coming in oh yeah, yeah here's a bomb yeah well like you could just do whatever you want i mean you you should probably keep jonas next to rhymer and tomax right so you yeah. got the uh the wedge formation there and then you got rack we didn't go over it, by the way. It's Ruthless, Death Troopers, Vader, Agile, Gunner, Dauntless, Baffle. Probably the only rack you see if you don't have Vader in your list. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. Yeah, And it's uh, it's a, a, an art set that we've seen uh, come up with Empire before. Um, <clears throat> that rack being able to um, to strip tokens with Vader or deal damage. And it gets even worse once you start getting into range uh, with the stress and Death Troopers. Uh, yeah, the Vader's just going to completely decimate your your ship if you can't clear uh, the Pond. distance and get out there. Uh, yeah, it's it's just going to give give you so much damage there. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot of beef to this list. Um, not not very many shields. This whole list only has four shields total. Um, but um, got zero a agility. Of shield. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this this takes a lot of work to go through through chew through, and uh, it, uh, it can definitely put out some damage. The other top four is a five T seventy list. Look at that. Uh, Ello with Ferrisphere and HLC, Veniza with Barrage Rockets Marksmanship, uh, Snap with R68 HLC, Kari with Afterburners, which I love. Yeah, just the one hard boost off doing like a sloop or a sloop, uh, talent or something. That's and then strong. You got yeah, Nimi with Ferrisphere and N9G8, 
M9G8 is a good call on Nimi. Just having her ability to convert a blank to a focus means you generally don't need that lock. Uh, I assume you put that on Kari. You could put it on Deniza. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Hello, whoever you want, right? <laughs> yeah, you can pick and choose. I mean, if you feel that you're going to get a good uh, like HLC shot off of Temin, uh, put on Temin. Um, you you have a, your pick of the litter here who you're going to uh, get that uh, M9G8 we roll off of. But uh, Demi, oof, man, that's a good shot. Yeah, if Nimi sticks around, Nimi is a menace, being that I2 just oh you never made me spend my focus token it'd be a shame if i just mm-hmm. get you back for three or four consistently yep. uh look i'll do uh the next one in the top eight ready yep. empire it's rack again yes death troopers vader agile gunners seismic charges and the title didn't want the ruthless baffle then you got standard loadout death fire which is awesome. Then you got Rhymer with feedback ping, cluster missiles, cluster mines, which you don't see much. The feedback ping is actually really nice because it works with that fire's ability, right? You just launch it over there and they'll just pick up the feedback ping. So you can oh, actually get smart. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Except for he brought cluster missiles. So <laughs> <laughs> you're not <laughs> capitalizing on being farther away from them. Uh, but, well, you I mean... have, but you have the. Uh, if you oh, no, you're Reimer, to come you're in, fine. yeah, I was gonna say, especially if you're expecting him to come in flying like close range, right? To like outrun the bomb, uh, yeah, sure. Wait, no, it's Reimer, you can just shoot at range three, anyways. No, we're good, yeah, easy, yeah, easy good. bonus. <laughs> uh, Tomax with Sat Salvo feedback ping as well, barrage rockets, munitions fail safe, not doing the bomb, so you can get that same trick for that double modded uh, barrage rocket shot, and then you got Juno. Passive sensors and targeting synchronizer, just in case you wanted to shoot your cluster missiles, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a that's a cool that's a cool kind of list you don't see much. That uh, I think people now realize that uh, the Thai bombers can bring feedback ping, so it works really well with that fire. Oh yeah, absolutely, I love it. Hey, look, Chris is back. Chris, do you want to go over a list or shall we keep going? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. my The itchiness is just... Oh, no, no, you're medically <laughs> fine, not brother. okay. You're fine. You're fine, brother. All uh, right, the so... Next, the next one we have is a is from Blue Tricycle, running a Republic list without Han in it. I, I, the irony here is we have no Han in the top cut. Rebel, rebel list, but yes, rebel list, yes. Um, but we have no Han in the top cut, right? So crazy. Yeah, um, no, no Falcons in the top yeah. cut. Yeah, you would think that that as a staple, but anyway, this is still a good list. Uh, we have Sabine with Lone Wolf, Bodica, Beskar, Mando, Predator, Luke with uh, or it's Boy Luke. Then we have Magpulse, Hopeful Hera, and Fen Rao. With Beskar, Reinforced Predator, and Crack Shot. And I like the Crack Shot Fen a little bit more than I used to um, before. So. Yeah, he's kind of a pain. <laughs> Push that damage through. Yeah. Especially yeah, if you got Hera on one side and Fen on the other side, right? Hera can ship your token. And then if she didn't use the token she has, she can pass it. And now you got Fen has Predator and, and Crack Shot. You're you're getting you're getting damage pushed through. You're 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 taking three four damage no matter what. There. And if you shoot back at those ships, Bordoka shoots you again. Yep. <laughs> Harder. <laughs> so, uh, JJ, you want to go over this SOC Republic list? Yeah, absolutely. It's got so, one of them that's interesting. So we got uh, a complete Siege of Coruscant list here. So we got Jack, SOC, Oddball, SOC, and Wolf. Those are the three Arc 170s that are just the trio for uh, the Republic. And then we got an appearance of a Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Siege of Coruscant version. He comes with Patience, Ancillary Ion Weaponry, and R4P17. And then Anakin Skywalker as well with the uh, Malice, Ancillary Ion Weapons, and R2-D2 crew here. Now, I actually um been tinkering with a couple of builds with that particular obi-wan because uh when you 
pair Obi-Wan and Anakin, they, all of a sudden that Ada becomes very, very AC. Obi-Wan allowing himself or Anakin to uh, perform a boost action uh, when, they, um, when they're when they at range one. Uh, after a fully executed maneuver, uh, being able to have more enemy ships around them um, than friendly ships, they can spend a force and perform a boost action afterwards. And then Anakin's ability allows you to perform a barrel action for the same as well. Um, so you can essentially uh, double reposition at the cost of two force and then take your action to either evade or target lock or focus whatever you want uh, early on. And um, and then you can be a much more AC type ship. Uh, Obi-Wan still being an I-5 and Anakin being that I-6. And if you happen to still be in range of these arc 170s uh, which can cover a lot of grounds they can uh, use their born for this ability to spend focus tokens uh, or provide focus tokens for them to use uh, for on, on defense and allow them to to live longer so uh, definitely something that we haven't seen used a lot uh, with Anakin is having that Obi-Wan Kenobi on there so it's uh, it's really nice to see that that combo come up yeah, and also worth noting that the R4P17 doesn't act like the R4P17 mm -hmm. we normally can equip, which is kind of like a pattern analyzer droid. This one's uh, after you be dealt a damage card. If you are not defending, you can uh, spend one of the two charges and gain a strain to discard it instead. Mm -hmm. And that works really well if you're just like, I want to plow through this rock. Why not? <laughs> or mostly bombs. Bombs is very good. Uh, but it's, it's a cool card. Do you you're not considered defending, right, for buzz droids, right? No. Uh, so no. they they engage I zero, don't they? They engage at I zero, but they I don't, don't think, shoot you. Yeah, they're not attacking you, right? Yeah. So you can gotcha. dump yeah, off a buzz point. droid, mm. which is kind of thematic, right? Yes, technically so. speaking, you can dump off a buzz droid. Actually, I've had that happen to me before, <laughs> where sorry. somebody has taken a buzz droid off. Um, Maybe it was Ryan. Was it Ryan? I can't remember if it's Ryan. Ryan used to fly this Obi um, <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, it was four points before uh, Anakin was four points. So people, he was toying around with that. Brought up the world, right? Yeah. I yeah, mean, so. three, three force is still nice, right? So. Three force and evade, and you got born for this if need be for the focuses. So you got. It. Yeah. It's a very tanky Obi. I'll take the next one. The last top eight here is a resistance list. Again, it's four and a half T70s. You got LO with M9G8 Marksmanship Heroic, Snap Waxley with R68 Ferrisphere Heroic, Kari with HLC Heroic Jamming Beam using both cannon slots. <laughs> well, the one native cannon slot and then the ability. And then you got uh, Jess Pava with R2D2 Jamming Beam. And then Lulo, my boy, with Shield Upgrade Heroic and Marksmanship. Isn't Predator better than Heroic here? I like Predator better, but man, do I miss Heroic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time. Uh, you're losing out on one point, which kind of feels bad, but the Heroic's not technically, statistically bad. I use it every game. <laughs> <laughs> there's many times where I'm just like damn it Lulo you didn't need to blank out on the four dice on your attack I wish I had heroic <laughs> yeah that's uh I mean it's a uh, four and a half d70s you know still good I love me some Lulo all right then the last three lists are kind of our middle of the road they had four and two wins um, didn't make cut, but they were there's some interesting stuff in there, especially that CIS list. <laughs> um, that CIS list is hilarious, um, in and of itself. The first um, one, um, okay. the first one is so, um, so I'm gonna cover that one. That one is Zam with Dead Man, Notorious, Perceptive, and Thermals, uh, kind of what we saw earlier. 047 with the Klani, Jango Fett. Because, I guess, because I I think I would have taken another... Well, you can't because you don't have enough like novice for... Novice tech. Yeah, or novice tech, yeah. One point left. That Django is just so... 
doesn't do anything. But in, in the question is, is can you even spend it with the ability, right? Like, technically, you're not allowed to spend them on offense. Well, you're not... I, I, you're not spending it for okay. that thing, yeah. All right. Then we have 404 SOC Dirge with Bo Katan and Proton Cannons. And that's the Bo Katan that allows you to reroll at range zero. So you can Proton Cannon somebody, go into range zero. It's like a free predator and like <coughs> run into them and just be able to reroll. And if you're, you have them in Bullseye twice, oh man, that's so dirty. Dirge needs a little bit more points so I can take my contraband as well. Um, and then that would be a really fun loadout. And then, of course, the Iron Assembler with energy shell charges, munitions fail safe. Um, so it's a different list. I I think if it were me, I would upgrade 404 to T81 or CAD and downgrade 047. But, I mean, the Kalani is still really nice, especially because people are going to move into your bullseyes. And even if they reposition, you can still spend it but you don't get a lot of dice, so I don't know. You have to be careful how many times you Kalani. <laughs> um, you might end up with the dead 404 pretty quickly. Um, but still, I like it. I think it's a cool list. Who's next? Who wants to take one of the JJ, you want to do the other yep. CIS list? Yeah, so we got DGS-286. That's the other HMP. He comes with repulsive uh, stabilizers, munition failsafes, discord missiles, and energy shell charges. We got two Geonosin prototypes, which are the other HMPs. These are uh, two pipped. Uh, they come with sync laser cannons, discord missiles, and cluster missiles. Uh, now we got another HMP in uh, DGS-047 with Kraken, uh, most likely providing those extra calculates over to the Geonosian prototype, so that way they can fully take advantage of those sync laser cannons. And then we got two Harshall prototypes with uh, energy shell charges, and then iron assemblers to round off the list with the struts, munitions, fail shapes, and the energy shell charges. Uh, man, this is a lot of three die guns coming at you uh, over there, along with uh, all those Discord missiles that those HMPs can can really put in there um when you start factoring in the side slips that these uh these ships can pull off uh they have no need to do k turns or anything like that they'll have a ton of time on target they'll be able to um to control the board with those uh discord missiles uh i mean you can ignore the discord missiles and try to go for the kills or you're going to take a crit and if they're getting a lot of time a target on you and plinking away your shields those discord missiles are going to start eating at you with crits um it kind of forces you to fly differently around these ships um and if you don't have the experience flying against these hmps they can be tough to to take down um just because of their ability to maneuver around the board differently uh than other ships and they also have a 180 degree arc um so they'll most likely always have you in arc all the time uh so it's definitely a uh, a very very interesting list uh for for cis and congrats on doing so well yeah Did you see who flew it yeah roger 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 roger, roger. <laughs> yeah best um, the best name for a cis list best name <laughs> The Best. other nice thing about this list too, that I it, like the horror shell char shell prototypes almost never get their ability off, but you're not stressed out, right? So now with not having the independent calculates, if you are able to line things up correctly, you could get their abilities off and have a calculate that you could share from another friend, your own calculate and a target lock. So mm -hmm. It, your energy shell charges, you're always sad because you don't have that target lock because you roll a crit or a hit and two blanks. <laughs> and then you're like, man, this sucks. <clears throat> the last one up is this scum list. Well, okay, I also have to shout out another list after this one, though. But, um, yes, this is a three-ship scum list because time hasn't changed yet. It is Boba Fett, Fen Rao, and Old Tarok. This Terok has Marksmanship, Fearless, Mando Optics, and Beskar, which is uh, what you typically see for this Terok. Then it has Fenrau with Predator, Fearless, Optics, Beskar, which is you know pretty pretty typical as well. And then you have Boba Fett with Marksmanship, The Child, and Proxy Minds and the Marauder. <laughs> 
you have you took off all of Boba Fett's like loadout, right? With proxy mines and the child. Because <laughs> proxy mines are 10, 10 points. It's great. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's a reason why people brought proxy mines on fire sprays. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That is definitely a flex, not for nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you're you're obviously flying this Fen Rao or not Fen Rao, you're flying this Boba Fett in a manner where you want them to chase Boba. Um, and Boba Fett, as long as he's range one, doesn't really mind um, you know, the child's lock ability. I mean, that just means that you make the priority um the ships that have the condition cards right with Fenrir and Terra just making sure that you uh strip any focus tokens uh with old Terra against those ships and then just completely decimating them with Boba and Fenrir uh if you're a ship that's <laughs> ends up in range one of all these ships uh you, you're you're gonna die yeah <laughs> pretty sure you're gonna die yeah. especially if you're facing Terra and you lose all your green tokens yeah yeah, your reinforces, your focuses, your evades, all gone. Jeez. Poor rack. Yeah, poor rack. God, I I love I, I bullied so many racks with a uh, Terok <laughs> when I um at the start of the two point when I played a lot of Terok. Oh yeah. So there's one more list, and I, this is gonna be another bombshell. This is the second straight tournament someone brought my list as well. Someone else ran my scum list again. <laughs> um, they came in 24th out of uh, the 44 people there. Uh, but, you know, someone brought it. Uh, I think they won three games with it. So <laughs> people are playing it now. It's catching on. We'll see. <laughs> it's catching fire. Yeah. yeah th their ships are. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I just I was blown away when I saw that. Like I looked at both tournaments, so I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> that list looks familiar. That was crazy. That was funny. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us this week on Planning Phase Syndicate. We will be back next week with another amazing episode, and hopefully my hands will be better so I can actually spend a little bit more time. Um, on the computer, um, I will not be able to get this episode out on Sunday, probably. Um, I'll attempt to, but I'm, I'm going to bed after this. So yeah. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get this up tomorrow for everyone and edit it and make sure that it sounds amazing. If you have not checked out Raytheo, Raythos podcast, head on over to Off Meta Podcast and check them out. The link will be in the description for where you can find them. If you haven't listened to his podcast, you should. It's an incredible podcast. Yes. yes. Yep. It is an amazing, amazing podcast, and it gives you insight into the players that are winning things more than us. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. With that being said, thank you all. Have a good night, and we'll see you next week. Have a great night, everybody.